Spirits. I'm Christy Brower, and I am so excited to be here with you on Marvelous Monday on OneTwoRadio.com. You, of course, have probably already been listening to the great shows this morning. You might have even heard me and Katie on One Two News, and I hope you were here for Mo because, well, Mo is truly one of the wisest people I know, so we do not want to miss out on what he's got to share. I have um, a really fun show planned for you. I'm excited about my topic today. You know, generally I am. You probably have noticed that about me, that I rarely say, hey, this is going to be a stupid show. I don't think you're going to like it today. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I know that's not the case. However, this, this topic has come up several times from those of you in the chat room. It's been coming up with my clients. And so it is a topic that I felt like would be a great one to hit on today and is one that is always interesting for everyone. So join me in the chat room. I would love to hear your thoughts, your experiences. I will be doing a few readings at the end of the show, although I'll say it's probably not very many because I have a lot to share today. Today I'm calling my show Past Life Connections. So I've done a lot of work with past lives. I've had many past life regressions in my in my experience this time around, and um, I've done a lot of past life reading. So I don't do past life regression. I look at past lives from a little bit different standpoint. You know me, I read everything from the energy body, and so I look at past life connections or attachments. So those energy cords that connect us to other people and to experiences that may have occurred in other lifetimes other than this one. So we're going to talk all about that today. I will start by telling you that I grew up in a belief system that doesn't believe in past lives at all. And so the concept was fairly foreign to me as a child, but became sort of came crystal clear to me in my early adulthood, in my early 20s, when I started reading about past life regression and about past life experiences, and I realized that I have had many of them, but I didn't know what it was because I didn't grow up knowing about it. But I have always felt a very strong affinity to certain places and certain cultures and have found, find it interesting that, you know, a lot of those things, you know, they were still occurring to me, even though I didn't know why. You know, for example, I have always been attracted to Stonehenge. I have always been very attracted to Egypt, and as a young um, teen, I was absolutely fascinated with Atlantis and had many books about Atlantis and read all about Atlantis. Long before my New Age metaphysical spirituality emerged, and, and so when I started learning about past lives, you know, for real as an adult, I realized that I've always known about this and always felt... Um, attracted to various things, to various um, places, and I didn't know why, and now I do. So I've, I've done a lot of study about um, Atlantis, Lemuria, Stonehenge, and that period, that time period. Um, another one that I, is, is probably my biggest affinity is Avalon. And, um, you know, the, the period of time, right just before Christianity kind of took over, when paganism and, um, you know, priestesses and, you know, female deity level spirituality was around. That is something that feels very strong to me and it's definitely a part of my belief system now. But I also feel very strongly that I was there during that time period, that I, in reading historical um, writings and in reading fictional writings that were based on the historical stuff, all those things really, really resonate with me. So I, I suspect that many of you have had that experience as well. And so that we're going to talk about this from a bunch of different angles, but I'm, I would love to know what you feel um, an affinity for. So I, I am live in the chat room in two ways. So you will find my band at the post of the page, which Scott put up for me. That's where the chat is happening. You're going to see lots of people commenting there. I'm also live on Facebook Live, so you can watch the show on video if you would like. I, I video the show for a couple of different reasons. I like feeling like I'm looking you in the eye when I'm talking to you, which is weird because I'm actually looking at myself. <laughs> it's a front-facing camera that I'm looking at. 
Um, but I feel more connected to you this way. I also like to video the show because then I put it on my YouTube channel and my website so that people have access to the show later. If you want to watch the show later on, and if I have a crystal to show, which I do today, you can see it. Um, I just feel like it makes a stronger connection. So I, I love doing that. So feel free to watch the show or listen to the show, however you want to do that. Um, and also remember that if you're going to watch the show, turn off the player because this, the sound does not sync up. There's a time delay on radio. So that, that's sort of the, the nuts and bolts of things today. There are some questions about if I'm going to do past life readings in the chat. I'll probably do a couple of them. Um, but I'm not going to do a lot of them. I have a lot to, to cover today. I also have a, an email reading that is a past life connections reading and I have it on sale this week because I wanted to share it with you. So I send it out in my newsletter. If you get my newsletter, then you've already received it. If you don't go to christybrower.com and you can sign up for the newsletter on the homepage. I send out a newsletter every week about my show and what's coming up. And I often send out a, um, a reading special. So this week is my past life connection clearing, which is um, normally $65 and I have it on sale for $50 this week in honor of doing this show and talking about this. So I'm going to share that in the chat and we'll talk more about what that reading entails as we go. I'm going to tell you first some stories about my experiences with um, past lives and past life connections. And then we're, and we're going to do a meditation and then we're going to talk about what is past life clearing? Why, why would we need it? Why would we want to clear our past life connections? We're going to get into all of that. So this is maybe a little different perspective on past lives than you've heard before, because it's not about past life regression, uh, which I love past life regression. Don't get me wrong. I've had many of them, but there are multiple ways of looking at this. And so I guess that's part of it. I want to share my take on it, which is a little bit different um, than, than maybe other people. So let's start with a few of my stories. So the first time that I had a past life regression, I was in my mid twenties. A friend of mine uh, that I worked with was doing some past life regression and she was asking for people to practice on. I didn't really know what to expect. I was, I was already on my metaphysical path, but I had not really gone very deeply into past lives yet. It was something I was interested in and just kind of starting with. And so I didn't really know where it was going to go. Well, in that past life regression, I visited six lives. It was very fast. I knew just briefly um, why I was there and what my experience was. But, but the thing that was that brought it all together, in spite of being different genders, different cultures, different time periods, in every single one of those six lives, I died from some sort of stomach ailment or injury. Now, I didn't go into this with that plan, but the bottom line was that I was struggling very much with um, stomach related issues. I had been told by my doctor while I was in college that I should have stomach surgery and I had been uh, resisting that and had been taking some medication and then I got off the meds because I didn't like being on them and was trying to do some alternative things to help with my stomach. And then I had this past life regression that went to all these times where I died of some sort of stomach related injury or illness. And it was a very enlightening experience. First of all, my stomach got better almost overnight. My stomach issues settled down a whole lot very quickly after this. And I, I started doing some research and learning because at the time I didn't know a ton about this. And what I learned was that we have cell memory and when we bring our cells remember, and really I think it comes from our souls as our souls animate our physical bodies, create our energy bodies. We bring with us some level of memory of previous experiences. And so sometimes we repeat patterns in this lifetime that have happened in other lives as well, based on our previous experiences. So when you have a past life regression or a past life clearing, and you learn that you have had stomach related issues in many, many lifetimes, when you remember that, that's the key. It's not about learning a lesson. It is simply about remembering. The lessons really have already been learned. It's the memory that's important you realize that maybe not everything is about this lifetime. 
the intensity of the stomach problems immediately reduced after that past life regression. And I went from a space of processing physically the stomach issues of all of those lifetimes to dealing with simply the stomach issues of this lifetime. Now, I do still have some stomach issues, but they are not nearly as intense. So I was able to drop away the energy of all of those previous lives because that builds massive intensity around an issue, whether it's a stomach problem, whether it's a relationship issue, it doesn't really matter. Any of those things build intensity when you are connected to multiple lives where you had a similar experience. So when I remembered that those issues were actually not from this lifetime, the intensity of the stomach problem settled significantly. So that was really my first experience. Then I started reading Sylvia Brown and reading Sylvia Brown's work on past lives and doing some of my own past life regression where I had many memories of lots of different things that helped me to resolve issues in this lifetime. But I had one particular issue that I never seemed to be able to resolve on my own and that was that I had all as a child and into early adulthood I was absolutely terrified of sharks and I was terrified of sharks in any body of water. Well here's a key. How do you know if it's a past life issue or if it's a current life issue? I have been born and raised in Idaho. I have been to the ocean a handful of times in my whole life. I have never had any direct experience with sharks except at aquariums in which I was in no danger at all. I had absolutely no reason to be afraid of sharks. So it was a very irrational fear. It happened in pools, it happened in lakes, in rivers. I remember visiting a large lake um, here in Idaho that sort of straddles the Idaho-Utah border called Bear Lake. And Bear Lake is a big, big lake. It looks like an ocean when you're at it. It's got a big, you know, very large sandy beaches. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. But the first time I visited it, I could not go in the water. I was scared to death to go in the water. I could go in maybe up to my knees and I couldn't go in any deeper because of this fear of sharks. So, um... In a past life regression with my sister, Katie, you guys know Katie, and she does past life regression here in the 1-2 family. She does past life regression over at 1-2 Listen. She did a past life regression for me where I had a memory of uh, being um, a young girl out on the water in a canoe with my brother, and I was a diver. I was diving for something. Uh, it, it turned out to be an indigenous culture that lived on the sea and lived off from the sea, you know, used, used things from the sea to survive. And I was diving for something. And as I was swimming back to our, our canoe, I was chased by a shark. The very clear memory of my brother grabbing me by the shoulders and pulling me into our boat and saving my life. And two things happened in that past life regression. First of all, my brother in that memory was my dad in this lifetime. Now they didn't look anything alike, totally different cultures, different bodies, but I knew immediately that that was my dad. Um, in that life, I was so terrified of sharks after that experience, I never went back into the water the rest of my life. It became like a disability because I lived in a culture that that is, was their entire livelihood and I could not participate. I was scared to death. When I had that past life regression and I had that memory, it changed things for me almost immediately. I can now go into all kinds of bodies of water without any fear. Been to Bear Lake several times since that experience and go way out. I can go clear up to my neck in that water and I'm not afraid. Um, I used to have panic attacks in swimming pools. I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't get afraid in rivers, nothing like that. I mean, I know now where that fear originated. It originated in that lifetime. I never resolved that fear in that lifetime. This is, I think, another key element that sometimes things get stuck in us. If we don't resolve something in one lifetime, we might carry it into another to try to work it out. And I feel like that the shark thing was exactly that for me, that I was trying to work it out and having that fear was part of it and knowing where it came from let me let go of it. And it is not an issue for me anymore. I don't have trouble with it. Uh, but I found it to be very interesting, you know, a really interesting experience to have a memory like that and have that fear fall away. So phobias can be a past life issue. 
Let's talk for a minute. I'm going to get back to some other stories, but I want you to hear some of them. Let's talk about some things. How do you know if something is past life related or if it is not? First of all, you, you look for, has something in this lifetime caused you to develop a fear of something? For me, I've never had an experience with a shark that I should be afraid of in this lifetime, right? So that is a good indication that it is a previous life. Now, it can be that you did have an experience in this lifetime, but did you have a very extreme response to that experience? Way over the top. Did you overreact in a massive way? Possible that you're reacting not only to that experience, but to the experience in previous lives as well. Remember that the energy of being connected to a past life experience has a tendency to amplify our emotional reactions. So we're going to get into relationships and past life relationship stuff here in a few minutes, but I wanted to start with that. So if it's, a, if it's an experience that has created um, a fear of some sort in your life or that has you know, contributed to a medical issue in your life, those are questions that you have to ask yourself to determine, is this from a previous life or not? For me, the stomach problem was very intense. Um, I was very young to be having that problem. And, you know, the past lives obviously confirmed that for me. The shark thing, obviously, I didn't have a reason to be afraid of sharks in this lifetime. I'd never had an experience that might have created some trauma for me that would have caused those fears. That didn't happen. So those are some things to listen, you know, to listen to yourself about and really think about. We're going to get into this more deeply, but I'd like to do a meditation first. We're going to do my inner peace meditation today. And Scott and I are going to synchronize our watches so that um, I can play the meditation out loud at the same time that he plays it over the radio so that it will be live um, on the radio recording and on the video recording. So Scott, let's go ahead and sync up our watches. I'm going to press play on inner peace. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Allow your body to settle and your mind to go quiet. Imagine that you are walking down a path in the woods. Take a moment to hear the wind in the trees. Feel the sun on your face and smell the pine needles. As you walk, you notice a sense of calm come over you, an inner knowing that all is well in this place and in you. You notice that you are approaching a log staircase that leads down into a serene meadow with a small pond. As you descend the stairs, you feel your consciousness moving down into your heart, preparing you for an experience of deep inner peace. When you reach the bottom of the staircase, take a moment to drink in the magnificent scene before you. The pond is still and reflecting the blue sky and white clouds above you. There are tiny purple flowers blooming all over the meadow, nestled in soft green grass. Near the pond is a bench under a willow tree. You hear a breeze in the willow, beckoning you to come and rest. You take a seat on the bench. Next to the bench is a basket of smooth, round pebbles. These pebbles represent the cares and worries in your life that get in the way of your inner peace. Choose a worry that you would like to give away. Pick up a pebble and whisper your worry into it, and then toss the pebble into the pond.
watch the ripples in the pond. And notice how the pond returns quickly to its serene and undisturbed state. See how the pond releases the experience and returns to peace. Choose another worry and another pebble and repeat the process. Notice how each time the pond is disturbed, it returns quickly to a place of serenity. Throw as many of your cares and worries into the pond as you would like. Although your experiences may disturb your inner peace momentarily, you can choose to return to a place of serenity, just like the pond. Take a moment to remember this place and the feeling of peace here. Know that you can return here anytime to release your cares and worries, and also to remind yourself how to return to serenity like the pond. When you're ready, stand up from the bench and return to the staircase. As you ascend, feel your consciousness rise back up into your head, storing your experience for future reference. As you walk up the path, bring yourself back to awareness. Feel the earth beneath your feet. Become aware of the sounds around you. And when you are ready, take three deep breaths. and open your eyes. And welcome back to Kindred Spirits. I'm your host, Christy Brower, and I hope you enjoyed that meditation. That is one of my most favorite meditations I've ever written, I think. I love the inner peace meditation. I love the idea behind um, the, the rocks thrown into the pond and how our experiences can shake our own inner peace, but that we can return to calm just like the pond. If you've ever thrown rocks into a body of water, you know that it is disturbed momentarily, but it is not disturbed in the long term, right? The pond returns to that clear, serene, glassy surface very quickly. And we can uh, take a l major lesson from that experience. So just felt like that would be a good one to share today. That meditation is available for free download at christybrower.com in my free meditations. And along with lots of other meditations, there are all kinds of things there that are free to download. But if you like that one and it's helpful for you, certainly go get it. You can use it more often. Katie in the chat says, it's like you read my mind. I needed to hear this meditation today, even if I can't participate. I have been over worrying lately and I'm not sure why. I haven't been this way in a long time. The worry of money has come back all of a sudden when I know I will be okay. I always am. Good. So, you know, go throw that worry of money into the pond, Katie, 
and, and release it from yourself. Okay, so we're talking about past life connections today and, and how our connections to previous lives can affect this life. I wanted to share a couple of thoughts in the chat from those of you who are listening. And then we're going to go a little deeper into this. We're going to talk about a stone that assists with this. We're going to talk about relationships because that's the big question that people have about past lives frequently are, you know, do I have any past life connections to the people I'm in relationship now? So let's see. Rebecca says that she says, weird and cool. I had a dream of a past life last night. See? You know, I do try to read the energy of the collective because I want to talk about things that are relevant to us right now. Jennifer says, hi, Christy. I have a definite connection with Stonehenge. Did you see where they did an archaeology dig there? I sure did. Very interesting stuff. And a definite connection with Avalon and Guinevere. Very cool. Jessica says that she has an affinity for the high desert in New Mexico. And Canyon de, de Chelly, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, Egypt and Turkey. Awesome. You know, I have not, I've yet to visit anywhere that I have a very strong affinity with because they're all in other countries and I hope to do that one day. I wonder how many of you are, have a goal like that as well. Melody says, I have been drawn to sacred mystery school sites, have visited numerous at designated times and numerous experiences and memories resurface with the places and people I encountered. I believe these resonate with us so we can gather information from those times to heal and utilize the energies. Always help me in my journey. Awesome topic. Very cool. Very cool, Melody. And yes, I do think that remembering our past life experiences do help us in this lifetime. Sometimes our connections to past lives can hinder us in some ways. So we're going to talk about that. But the memories themselves are really important. We need them. Let's see. Uh, Jennifer says, I did my own past life meditation of my own. I am terrified of heights. There was no reason for me to be that I could come up with in my, in my life. I asked my guides to please take me back to the time where this occurred. It was on a castle, like a wall. I was at the edge. I kept saying to myself, I fell. But no, I was shown that I was pushed. Later on, I was with Marcus on a playground where I had to climb a rope ladder and I just walked across it and I wasn't afraid. That's awesome. See? Remembering helps us so much. Mindy says, that was such a beautiful meditation. I needed that visualization so bad. I'm stressing about finances and finding work. So I will run to that meditation as many times daily as I can. Thank you. Awesome, Mindy. I'm so glad that it helped you. And, you know, that's always my goal. My meditations are not just a meditation, but they're a healing, too. I'm sure that you've noticed that. So I'm, I'm glad that it was helpful to you. So the stone that I chose for this week is carnelian. And carnelian is known to be a stone that is helpful in past life regression and in understanding and remembering past lives. It is a stone that supports creativity and it helps us to access deeper parts of ourselves because it heals anxiety. It helps us to feel safe and we need to be able to feel safe to access those parts of ourselves. It also is a stone that connects us to our family line and assists us with di difficult family issues. And so I think that's one, another reason why it's helpful in past life regression. So get yourself a piece of carnelian if you're wanting to meditate and work on, you know, remembering past lives, this is one way to do it. So let's talk a little bit about relationships and past lives. This is a question that I get on a very regular pace basis. Um, you know, and, and, Am I connected in a past life to the person I'm with now or to my ex? Or, you know, is there someone coming for me that is, you know, my twin flame or someone like that, you know, that may have some connection to a previous life? Well, not every relationship that we have is past life connected. I'm sure that you know that. But there are certain ones that are. So here are some ways to tell um, if a relationship is a past life connected relationship. If when you met the person initially, you had a very strong reaction, like you have known them before, your relationship developed very quickly into a very close friendship or a very close romantic relationship, you it, it was almost as though you didn't really get to know each other, need to get to know each other to have a relationship that you already did know. Um, and sometimes, you know, we have intense connections with people that aren't past life, but often those very intense sort of whirlwind romances, or because we are with a soul we know. 
so it's almost as though we just are remembering who they are, that we don't actually have to know who they are because we already knew. Is this a relationship that's very intense and tumultuous? Is it a relationship that's you've gotten back together and broken up and gotten back together many times? Are there very intense emotional issues? Do you have strong responses to each other that seem to be bigger than what they should be? Are you constantly trying to be in a relationship with someone and it never works out? Things never t line up time-wise. Maybe they're in a relationship when you're not and then you are when they aren't and it just never quite works out, but you still feel drawn back to them for some reason. Are they not good for you? Is the relationship not healthy? And yet you continue to keep trying and keep pushing because you feel like you are supposed to be with that person. These are all indications of a previous life connection with them, of a previous relationship of some sort with them that is pulling you in and drawing you, creating a need for connection with them or creating the illusion that you have a connection with them, even though it never seems to work out that way. Those are some things that can indicate to you that this may have been a past life relationship. So what is a past life connection clearing? A past life connection clearing is a clearing of attachments between you and someone else and a previous life. And so you may have a cord from you and a cord from them that connects and plugs into a previous life experience. When that happens, you may feel emotions and deal with issues in a relationship that didn't happen in this lifetime. You may be trying to resolve things that happened prior when you were actually different people and living a different life. Now, you can't really work out those relationship issues in this lifetime. They can very much complicate your relationship in this one. So a past life connection clearing is a clearing of your connection, that cord, it needs to be pulled and healed and the two of you separated from that time period so that you can deal with only what is now in this lifetime. Just because you were in a relationship with someone in a, in a lifetime before does not mean that you're supposed to be with them again. You know, maybe you can. There's never a supposed to be with anybody, okay? You always have choice. And these past life connections can sometimes make it feel like you don't have a choice. Can keep you coming back to a situation that isn't healthy for you. Can keep you coming back to a situation that just never works out. Can cause you to pine for someone who does not want to be with you. So pulling that connection releases you from the energy of the previous life and allows you to deal with only what is in this lifetime. Sometimes you have multiple past life connections with a person. I've seen that many times where you have more than one life, where you've lived in different kinds of relationships. Now remember that just because it's a romantic relationship in this lifetime does not mean that it was in another life. It may have been that you were siblings in another life. It may have been that you were mother and child or father and child. It may have been that you were rivals in some way. All of that energy can really impact a relationship in this lifetime, particularly if there isn't any reason for it. I've worked with um, individuals before. Hang on one second. I need to grab a drink. I've worked with individuals before who have a very strong energy of competition in their family maybe with a sibling or a, or another or a, or a mother or father where they feel like they're constantly competing with one another always need to one up each other now that could be from your relationship in this lifetime but it could also be from another experience so remember that if you are the mother of someone in this lifetime and they were your mother in another lifetime you may struggle with um, who is the authority in that relationship, right? Because if you have felt like you were, um, you know, a parent or an authority position with someone in a one lifetime, and now they are in that position in this one, that can very much complicate your relationship. It can complicate your relationship a great deal if you were in a, in a relationship with someone in a previous lifetime in which they were abusive to you or they killed you or, you know, or vice versa. So pulling past life connections simply 
dials down the intensity. It removes the connection to the energy of the previous life, the emotional energy that you had between each other, so that you can deal with what's going on now in this lifetime and in this lifetime alone. I, I hope that that makes sense. That is what I do. Now, I can do it with a relationship. I can do it with a situation. You know, if you have a phobia, anything like that, we can look at it. But it comes up as relationship issues almost always. But some of us have those phobia things as well. Now, I'll give you an example. I'm going to tell you a story about myself. So I have a son. He is adopted. Um, I, My wife and I got him. We were his foster parents. We got him right before his 15th birthday, adopted him on his 16th birthday. So he is not my biological son. But I have a very clear past life memory of being his mother in a previous life. I was his mother. I had him when he was an infant. I had him. I was raising him and someone took him from me and adopted him out to someone else. I think that it was at a time when it was nearly a crime to be um, an unwed mother. So I was a young unwed mother. Someone took him from me, adopted him out, and I never saw him again. I died young. I never recovered from the grief of that loss. And I fully believe that him coming back into my life in this lifetime is our opportunity to work through that issue of being separated, even though in this lifetime he's not my biological son. I'll tell you, even though he is not my biological son, we have a lot of similarities. Many people don't know that he is not my biological child. When we meet, they tell me that he looks like me, which, you know, maybe he does, but we aren't related. He also has some very similar medical issues to me. My doctor recently joked that he has really bad genes thanks to his mom, and I really laughed because we are not biologically related. However, we have some very similar things going on with us. It's just another way of looking at a past life connection. I do feel like this is our opportunity to resolve some issues. Although through some things we've been through in the last few years, I have had to pull my past life connections with him and I because it was creating intensity in our relationship that I needed to settle down. And so I did pull my past life connections. So I know that that previous experience is there, but I'm careful about not letting it have too heavy of a um, effect or impact on a relationship now. I have talked to him about that. Um, he resonates very much with that story and feels that it is true. And he does tell me that he does truly feel like I am his actual mother, even though I did not give birth to him. We in my family have felt like he was a part of our soul group and that we needed to find him. Now we'll talk about, let's talk about soul groups a little bit. Soul groups are, tend to be groups of souls that incarnate together in various forms. Sometimes it's your immediate family. For me, it is. But it isn't always. Um, sometimes your immediate family are souls that you've never incarnated with before. And there are more struggles in, a, in that situation, you know, because you don't know each other that well. Sometimes it is your spouse and their family that feel like your soul group. Sometimes it is your close friends. You know, when we talk about that we make our own families, I think that's what we're referring to. Is the people that we feel the most connected to, the closest to, are often the people who are our soul group, people we have incarnated with before in various relationships. And so that can create some um, complications as well because of, you know, what your relationship was in a previous lifetime versus what it is in this one. So those are things to consider and ways to help you to determine if something is in fact a past life situation or not. Okay, I know there's lots of comments in the chat. I wanted to get to some of these. I forgot to show you also, I'm holding a piece of carnelian and I didn't even show it to you. This is a piece of carnelian agate. This is a, a great stone to use for um, working with, sorry, I'm making sure I have two videos. I'm making sure I can, both videos are seeing it. Um, a great stone to work with past life issues. This is a piece of carnelian agate that belonged to my mom. So obviously a great one to be working with all different kinds of energy. Okay, so I wanted to get some to some questions or some comments here. Katie says, one time I was working at an old restaurant and got this overwhelming feeling I had been there before. Yeah. Yeah, where do those feelings come from? Well, I think they come from having lived more than one life. 
Christine says, I always need to have something to eat with me. I'm always hungry, though I never gain any weight and have been told I lived in poverty in past lives. Now, that makes sense to me that you would feel insecure about food and intentionally have food with you. Now, I'm curious, though, Christine, knowing that, has it helped you? Is that less of an issue for you now? And if it's, in fact, that you're just always hungry and you have a fast metabolism, that's fine. But do you notice that you have less fear or worry about it, knowing that it is not just a this life issue? Mercy says, I'm sure that I died a small child of diphtheria. I have a very tender throat. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Katie says, I was with the man I am now. when We were killed in a car accident, leaving that place. Oh, the restaurants. Okay. Interesting. Isn't it amazing how we just know these things? And I'm glad to give a forum for all of you to be able to talk about it. And this is a safe place to talk about it because I know this is one of those topics that for people who do not believe in past lives, sometimes they aren't very receptive to this. But I feel that we are honestly just unconsciously know about a lot of our past life connections. Mandy says, the last few men I've dated were all from past lives and they didn't turn out well. I think it's time to release those types of relationships. You moved me forward with your talk about past lives today. Wonderful, Mindy. I'm glad that you can recognize that. It's important to note that a past life connection does not always make a good relationship. Sometimes it makes a not so good relationship. So it's good to realize that so that you're not constantly pushing for something um, when it comes to a relationship that feels like a past life connection. It doesn't mean that you have to be with that person. Maria is also struggling with worries about bills, debt, and not being able to find a professional job. That's three of you that have talked about that. So definitely use that inner peace meditation to help you. That's wonderful. Ivy says, I'm drawn to the moon. And when I see pictures of lands from Ireland, Scotland type of countries, I feel like I belong there. I'm sure I have some past life connection to being a witch strongly, probably was stoned um, or hanged, which could explain my RA now being stiff, hip problem and neck issue now has become more severe. Anyhow, when I do past life work, I feel like I go to future instead of past more. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I do one thing we should talk about then you and I should do a past life connection clearing because we should clear the connection to those experiences of being hung and stoned. If you feel like they're affecting you physically now, we should pull your cords. But that makes very much sense to me. I have read all about the Salem witch trials. I've been very interested in all of that, that time period. And I feel like I was there. I feel like I was, you know, accused of witchcraft, even though those women actually weren't witches. But I do feel like I was a healer in that time period and, and was one of those as well. Hang on one second. Got to have a drink. Geraldine says, I would love to know what you get on a past life with my partner who died, Randy. My reaction was complete devastation. I know this was a past life for sure, and I have a feeling the age of 37 had a past life cellular recall, possibly after reading Sylvia Brown's take on that. I haven't had a good relationship since. Okay, Geraldine. So I would agree with you. I, there is a strong chord there. It doesn't matter if that person is still living or not. You still have the connection. And it is important to allow you to be able to move forward. You're still living this life. You should be able to go forward and be with someone else if you want to. You have the, that right to be happy. So let's just take a look at that for a moment, Geraldine. Let's pull, let's pull your past life connection to your previous life with Randy to give you permission to move on and move forward. I feel like Randy wants that for you too. He doesn't want you stuck in this. But I see that it's a large, heavy cord that holds you to a previous life. I feel like you have lost Randy before. It wasn't just this lifetime, but other lifetimes you have outlived him. And so this is a repeating of the same experience, which creates intensity. You know, of course you were completely devastated when he died, but I feel like you feel like it was bigger than it should have been for you. And so let's just pull that connection so that you can be released from it. And we're going to heal that energy. And there literally is a part of energy, a part of your energy body returned to you because cords are a piece of our energy body that are connected to something else. And so that is something that's returned to you that you may have felt was missing. 
I'm going to return that to Randy uh, as well. Even though he's passed on, he still has that connection too. Okay, Geraldine. So it's in your solar plexus and your heart. And there is some resistance or reluctance there to seek happiness for yourself, almost as though you feel like you're being unfaithful, even though Randy's no longer here. So let's just help you to clear that so that if you decide that you want another relationship, that you can have one, that it is okay to do that. Sometimes I think we feel like these past life relationships are so epic, they're so large in our lives, that it's hard to move on to something that isn't. But I will say that many relationships that are not past life connected are a little easier. They aren't always so complicated. There we go. Okay, so those are released, those cords are released from you, and I did a healing in your energy body. I feel like you may find that you can move forward. Um, after that experience that you may find that you actually even are able to allow yourself to have another relationship. Thank you for that question, Geraldine. That's a really good example of what I'm talking about today. Terry says, that's totally my son and myself. I think he was my parent. <laughs> yeah, I've worked with many people with that particular relationship issue relating to past lives. So Terry, we could work on that. Um, you know, hit me up over at one to listen Let's do the email reading. I think that it's a great one. Um, to release yourself from and release the other person from so that you can move forward with just the emotional energy around this lifetime. Ah, Marcy says, all you were saying is true and I knew it as soon as I met this man. Not right now, but I knew him at another time. Yes, I think we do know. I think we also have a tendency to um, bury that information or ignore it or deny it if we don't think that we um you know if we can't can't really share it or it would be weird or how do we know if it's really true i think we know i think we always know okay mindy says my stomach always hurts i was poisoned in a past life by a lover's mother how can i move past my stomach issues good question let's see here Ooh, interesting. Okay, so I would like to, let's pull your cord to that situation. That will help. Sometimes remembering it is not enough. If there's a very strong energy connection, which there is to this one, you need the cord pulled as well. So let's just pull that and heal it and see how that does for you, Mindy. I would, I'm curious to know also how this may have affected your relationship with in-laws. So consider not only the stomach issue, but how, is, how have things been with the family of your partner or spouse? I suspect you may have been a bit distrustful because of it. So think about that and let's see how pulling the cord does for you. Oriana, hi Christy, I feel like I have a past life connection with a friend of mine from high school. We never dated, however, we've always been uh, very close. And whenever one of us needed each other, we've reached out in our time, need, our time of need. Can you check on that? Yeah, you know, honestly, Oriana, I feel like that's a positive past life connection. I'm glad that you asked that. There are some. We have some great connections to people from previous lives. We only pull the cords if it is something that is troubling you. I don't feel like this one needs to be cleared. I do feel like you're right that you are connected um, in that way, but I don't think that we need to clear it. It's something that's positive for you. So, Sometimes we have great relationships with people in past lives and we don't need to let go of those connections. So thanks for that question. Christine, who had the, the question about um, always having food with her, says, actually, it hasn't changed anything, even though I know it comes from a past life. Same with money and poverty. Uh, what would you recommend? I would recommend a past life connection clearing again. That tells me that it's um, a heavy enough connection that it also has a cord that we need to clear. Can birthmarks or physical problems be from injuries that happen in a past life? Lynn is asking. Yes, I do believe that they can. Um, I've, there are many documented instances of that. And I think many of us like me with my stomach and like Mindy with her stomach can, can attest to that, that we've had experiences that we know have come from previous experiences. Uh, Marina says, heavy rains always take me back to the moorlands in England. Isn't it funny? Have you ever thought about 
you know, why you would feel so connected to a place that maybe you've never been or lived, but there's something that triggers a memory in you. It's a past life experience, guys. Jane says, I totally got confirmation chills when you spoke about your son. You're so spot on. I know. It's a it's a really powerful one. It's It's been a very powerful one. And one I've had to work on to not be too intense about in this lifetime and not hold on too tightly to him because I need to allow him to grow, you know. And there's a part of me that wants to just hold on very tightly. So I really do have to work of it, work at it. Uh, <laughs> Lioness Morleen says, I have always had an aversion to lots of ants. I think it's from being buried alive in a previous life. Oh, whew, that's an awful one. I'm so sorry. That, yeah, that, that does resonate. Because really, I mean, unless you've been buried in ants in this lifetime, why would you feel that way? Let's see. Jennifer says, I would love to know if I had some past life cords attached to my adopted mom. I had a terrible relationship with her. No, actually, that is not a past life experience. That is a current life experience with a soul that you had never incarnated with before. So it was all very new for both of you. Um, I do feel like there are some cords there, but they're not past life. They're current life, Jennifer. So interesting, you know, it, it's it. There's always more to this. It's it's always complicated. It's never just one thing. But let's um, if you don't mind, I have a couple of cords I can see there between the two of you that can be pulled. So let's take care of that and see if that helps lower the intensity and pain. I, I suspect that you don't have contact with her, but that you still feel a lot of pain from that. So there's some energy we can clear there to help you to feel better about it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mindy, who has the stomach problem from being poisoned in a past life by her lover's mother, says, My ex-husband's parents are deceased, but his sisters were so mean to me. They still hover over him like he's their son. You hit it on the head. They were poisonous to your relationship. There you go. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Uh -huh. Geraldine says, Thank you so much, Christy. Ironically, I dreamt of Randy last night. First time in a long time. <laughs> Big smile on Randy's face. I look forward to feeling better. Good. Oh, I'm so happy, Geraldine. That's wonderful. And how interesting that that would come up and then this show would happen today, right? Cheryl says, the love of my life uh, felt like a past life connection. It was intense. However, the relationship ended many years ago now. We both moved on. Does this mean we still have a connection today? It probably does, Cheryl. But if it's not something that bothers you, and that you struggle with, it doesn't need to be cleared. Um, and that's okay. R really, the, we only clear them if it's something that still really gets at you. So, you know, that's something that we can look at if it still really gets at you. But if it doesn't, it's okay to leave it. Kathy says, wonderful show, very helpful insight. I feel my siblings and parents have all had some past life experiences that we're supposed to learn from and work through. Some happy and some challenging. Does this feel right? Love the show. Yeah, I feel that soul group connection for you, Kathy. It's very similar to my immediate family. So I, I understand it. Let's see. Lynn says, years before I met my husband, I saw him driving by me one day and said to myself, there he is, my future husband. I knew him from a past life. Wow. I love that, Lynn. That's wonderful. So interesting that you can see someone and know that physically they look different than they did in that previous life. They don't look the same, but we just know, don't we? Good. And Jennifer says, yes, she's gone to no contact. So I did pull with the with her uh, adoptive mother. I did pull a couple of cords there, Jennifer. So I think that will help. Uh, Marina says, before my last trip to England in 2015, I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching videos of the English countryside. Yeah, you just knew. Very cool. Let's see. One last one and then we're out of time. Jessica says, I get sad when the wind whips up around sunset. I was just talking about this with my mom last night. I thought it was because I was born during this time, but now I think it might be a past life experience. It certainly could be. Jessica, work on that. Do a little meditation around it. See if you can come up with what it was. If you want some help, do the past life connections reading with me and I can tell you what it was. I could do a reading for it. I don't have time right now. But uh, thank you all so much for being here today. This has been such a fun topic. I'm glad it resonated with all of you. It certainly did with me. 
Uh, look for that Past Life Connections Clearing email reading. It's on sale this week. It's over at OneTwoListen.com on my advisor profile page. It was in my newsletter, and I posted it in the chat as well. If you want to go deeper on this, I will be available with for you the rest of today and every day at one Two listen And thank you so much for being here and listening to one Two radio where we're changing the way you listen to the world. <laughs>